The heart of a power tool workshop, it's the table saw. But a table saw needs some care once in a while. Now, a good place to start with caring for your table saw is to clean out the sawdust in the base. You know, table saws are notoriously difficult to get good dust collection on. So the sawdust tends to build up quite a bit. And we need to get it out of there for a couple of reasons. One is that it's going to impair the ability of your dust collection system to get the dust that it can. Two, eventually all that sawdust will create an environment which will start to gum up the workings of the mechanism of your saw. And third, it's a fire hazard. Now I've witnessed about three table saw fires and the last one happened when I was operating the saw. So the point is, you can start a fire in your table saw and that's another good reason to keep the base of your saw clean. So let's go ahead and get started and clean the sawdust out of the saw. Well, lots of sawdust in this table saw. There's no good way to get it out. It's awkward, it's messy, but it's got to go. Well, since we're already on our hands and knees, it's a good time to take care of the worm and worm gear the mechanisms that raise the blade up and down and tilt it to a bevel. Now what I like to do is take a nylon bristle brush or a brass bristle brush and get in there and clean all the sawdust off the worm and the worm gear. I'll then apply a light amount of a dry lubricant. You may also want to take a little bit of aerosol oil and lubricate the steel shaft that connects the hand wheels to the mechanism. Just make sure you use a product which has lasting lubricating properties rather than a product which simply is meant to break apart rusty metal. Now many table saws that are used in garage or basement shops will show a few spots of glue, maybe a few spots of varnish, and a light glazing of some rust. So I think a good way to start is to use a Scotch-Brite pad and carefully go over the entire top of the saw to make sure that it's smooth and free of any debris. Also, make sure that you get in the miter slots. These need to be clean and smooth. With the top clean, it's time to think about putting some kind of protective coating on it. There are a lot of great products out there. What I always turn to, though, is just paste wax. Why? Because I have it. It provides a little bit of protection from rust, and it provides a very nice lubricated surface that the wood slides right across when I'm using my table saw. Cover the top thoroughly with the wax and make sure you get it down in the miter slots as well. Now while it doesn't need the protection, it doesn't hurt to put a thin coat of wax on the balance of your outfeed table as well. That way when you're cutting big sheets of plywood, it'll move right along. Now all I have to do is give the wax a few minutes to dry and I'll buff it out with a clean cloth. There are three last steps we need to take in our table saw care and they are about ensuring the accuracy of your saw. In place of a saw blade, I've put in here a calibrating disc. And so it's a true well-machined disc, 10 inches in diameter, that's going to replace the blade. And it gives us a reference that we can trust to set up some different things. The first thing we want to do is make sure that the blade is 90 degrees to the surface of the table saw. Now, all table saws, of course, tilt back and forth and there'll be a bolt underneath in the mechanism of your saw which you can adjust. The way to check the blade to make sure it is true 90 degrees is not to reference off the throat insert plate, but to reference off the cast iron top of your table saw. To do that, I'm actually going to use a framing square. And for convenience, I've clamped it to a block of wood. So as you can see, I'm referencing off the top itself, and with the framing square clamped to the block, it's very easy for me to make fine adjustments and get that blade exactly 90. So now I'm going to go underneath the table saw, and I'll work with that bolt to make sure that I'm always coming back to that exact same spot. Once I have the table saw blade set to where it always comes back to 90 degrees, my next task is going to be to make sure this blade is exactly parallel to the miter gauge slots. The easiest way to do this is to take a straight edge that you trust, place it against our calibration plate, 
Now, take your miter square, place it in the miter slot, and then extend the blade out until it just touches our rule. Now what I'll do is slide my miter gauge back and forth and I can very quickly see if there's a gap that opens up between the two. If there is, this blade is slightly out of line from the miter slots. The way we fix that is that most table saws will have four bolts underneath which hold the mechanism to the top. We need to loosen those bolts and using a dead blow hammer, a short piece of tube before, whatever you can use, we need to be able to tweak that mechanism just a little bit until we get our calibration plate exactly parallel to the miter slot. Our last chore is to make sure that the fence is exactly parallel to the miter slots. Now all fences are a little bit different, but for the most part, what you'll find is two set screws on the T-head of the fence. An Allen wrench will allow you to adjust them in and out, and it's very easy to adjust the fence and get it right on. And with that done, you finished a basic table saw tune-up. Hey guys, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. You can also click the bell to get notifications every time we post a video. Feel free to comment below and we'll get to as many as we can. Also, we're including links to the sources, plans, everything you need to know in the description below. Thanks.